Welcome back, Trevor. <laughs> so if any of you have seen the first video I did with Trevor, he was wearing the exact same thing because this is the exact same day. <laughs> so we just stopped our conversation, but it's not being launched for a little while after the last video we did. So if you didn't get to see the last video with Trevor, we talked a little bit about him and his background, how he became a nurse anesthetist, super interesting stuff. Recommend you go back and watch it. But today, we're going to talk about how you recommend people approach passing NCLEX. And one of the things that I hear a lot from my students, um, as I've said before, probably half the people who attend my reviews have failed NCLEX one time. So they already took the NCLEX, and then they said, I need some help. I'm going to come to a clinic review. And there's always lots of questions. Why is the NCLEX the way it is? Why is it so hard to figure out? I know my stuff. Why couldn't I pass? And how would you answer some of those questions? What is the NCLEX all about? Can you help people understand it a little better? Yeah, the NCLEX, it's been around a long time, you know, and it went through its various iterations of paper to computer. And then, you know, the, the question banks are they're really well vetted and they go through an intense process. They're really scrutinized. They, at the same time, because healthcare, medicine and nursing, it changes very quickly. Those same questions have to be updated as well and scrutinized again. So when, when I think about the NCLEX, I think about, man, it's a really robust exam and it's has a long track record um, and so whatever it is that they're aiming for, like with their metrics and so on, like they, I feel like they're, they're pretty confident that they're getting that, um, as far as a certification exam or a licensing exam, excuse me. So, and I think that that is part of what makes it like kind of intimidating to people, you know, and, and so, and it, it it's an entry to nursing in the United States and then. A few other countries as well but so people know like gee i can't pursue my livelihood and there's this 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 hurdle this final barrier for me doing it and um and that makes it another intimidating aspect to it so you know when it comes to passing the nclex there's those are those are hard things uh, but it, it's possible and many people do pass it and i think that uh, nursing programs in general are they're hard and if people can get through their nursing program they, they can pass prepare and pass the NCLEX too so sometimes it's hard to figure out what the NCLEX is testing um, we certainly hope it's safety but that's um, hard to test do you think it's testing safety do you think it's testing something else what do you think the NCLEX is is really testing? Yeah, I think, I mean, their aim is obviously to make sure that when you pass it, you as a person possess a certain body of knowledge and you possess a certain judgment or discerning eye to scenarios and and that hopefully that discerning eye is one that would be described as safe so that when you walk into a hospital you apply that same essential body of knowledge with that discerning eye to a whole host of situations and you take good care of people and make safe good judgment and so i think that in general for what it is as far as multiple choice and all the different question types, the NCLEX probably does a pretty good job at that. Um, I think the ideal situation, which would be cost prohibitive and no one would want, would be an in-person high fidelity situation or simulation, and that would probably get them closer to an ideal safety. But um, for the needs of the moment, and I think that the NCLEX probably does a pretty good job at, at getting them close to that safety what do you think 
new grads need to know to pass? What do they need to know to pass? Well, I think, I think one of the key things that new graduates need to realize is this. In their nursing program, they were, they were trying to cover everything, and there was a huge pool of information. And so when it comes to the NCLEX, you're switching gears. You don't have to know everything. For the NCLEX, there is this prescribed central, essential body of knowledge that you absolutely must know. And, and so for the new graduate preparing to take the NCLEX, one of the first things I would say is figure out what that essential body of knowledge is. And the, the big challenge for you as a new grad is it's unlikely that you're going to be able to figure that out on your own. So either your nursing program helped you do that and your professors were very good about helping you identify the essential body of knowledge, or you're going to have to go to some resource for help. Um, so you have to have that central body, essential body of knowledge. And then on top of that, you have to have the ability to take that knowledge and apply it to NCLEX style questions. And so, you know, clinic reviews, we focus on that essentials and helping you apply those. And so I think we're the best at that part, especially the essential body of knowledge. Um, and that, that's critical. Otherwise, you're going to spend your time on the periphery. And even if you have a ton of knowledge and it's not the essential knowledge, you may, you may never need it uh, for your NCLEX. So one of the things Clinic Reviews does not do is we don't provide a database of NCLEX style questions. Do you have a recommendation? And we are not uh, getting any kickback on anything. We don't partner with anybody as related to that. So um, I don't want anyone to think that we're being paid to make a recommendation on this because we are not. Do you have a recommendation or recommendations for where students could go to get a database of questions? Yeah. So, you know, Mark and I have had the discussion. We've had the discussion as uh, instructors and in general, our you know, you know, when it comes to those NCLEX style question databases, QBanks, you're going to have pretty much there's no one's doing just the books anymore. Every, there's online and maybe some paper copies. Most the books offer an online option after you buy the book. Yeah, exactly. So there's some people who love the books, but I think the, the, the top three that we recommend, and these are in no particular order, but uh, UWorld has a pretty good program. NCLEX Nursing Mastery is another one that has is, is pretty good as well. And then Lippincott. I think whatever their most recent edition is of their NCLEX uh, style question, QBank, those are the three that we recommend the most. Um, and so if you're going to practice questions, get those. Now, if you've already paid money or like your school says, well, you have to use this one, and you're like, man, funds are tight. I wouldn't necessarily run out and spend more money on those one of those three. Just use what you have and make the best use of, of whatever QBank you do have. Um, so you, you could save some money there if, if that's you, but if you're just starting out buying one, I'd go with one of those three. Yeah. Do you think the question bank that they choose has an influence on whether they pass NCLEX or not? So for example, if they say, well, I already bought this one, and I know you said stick with the one you already bought, right? And I, and I agree 100%. You said stick with the one you bought. Don't go out and spend more money that you don't have, okay? But this still stresses people out. You, we, we know nurses. We are nurses. They get stressed out, right? They go, I don't have that resource that you just recommended. Is it going to matter if they stick with the one they have? Is it going to influence whether they pass or not? I don't think it's going to influence whether you pass or not. I think that the way that you use QBank, the way that you use QBanks, will influence whether or not you pass. That's the key. So remember how I talked about you have to identify essential knowledge and then you have to be able to apply that essential knowledge. You need to use the Q banks to improve your ability to apply your knowledge of content to NCLEX style questions. So you use the Q banks to work on the second part, the application part. You do not use your Q banks to 
learn essential content. It may happen that you learn essential content by doing the QBank, but to do QBank questions and try to learn your essential content that way is extremely inefficient and can be very confusing. And so that right there is the biggest mistake that people make with their QBanks. They, they spend so much time in there. They say, oh, I'm, I'm reading all the rationales. And I learned so much about all this stuff. So they write it all down and they have notebooks full of all the rationale and they can't possibly memorize it all. It stresses them out. Yes. And so I hate to see hear about people doing that because what you should be gleaning from the QBank is, is whether or not you understood how to apply your content to this particular question or this question type. And so I think that's the biggest thing that, that people need to know about QBanks and that you need to find different resources to improve your knowledge of the essential content. I agree 100% and I say that over and over and over and over again because I see too many NCLEX preppers using their QBanks to memorize the rationale. And it's, it's so stressful and they'll, they'll answer a question and then they'll give the immediate feedback, which I recommend against using immediate feedback. Um, but they get the immediate feedback and then they, they get focused on reading the rationale rather than self-evaluating on how they did on the question. Yeah. See, QBanks are all about self-evaluation. How, how did I answer this question? Did I use a rule? Did I know that, you know, did, is there a concept I didn't understand? Um, did I overthink? Did I second guess? See, it's all about applying what you know and then self-evaluation. Yeah, that's so like what you said is the other piece about using QBanks, you don't do a question and look at the rationale. You, you need to do a series. And so that could be 10, but you, you eventually need to build up your stamina. And so you've got to do, be able to sit down and do at least 50 at some point, maybe even 100, maybe 200 at some point. Not every day, though. Not every day. Totally. Yeah, not every day. But you got to build up your stamina. It's like running a marathon. So, yeah, that's a good point. And then look back on those and evaluate them and how you did. Yeah, I think that is, yeah, and I, I would, although I agree on the on the Q-Banks that you, you recommend, um, when people say, I already bought this Q bank, yeah. I say then stick with it. Yeah. Unless you have endless amounts of money and you want to go with one of these other ones, stick with it. It matters more how you use the Q bank yeah. than the Q bank that you're using. Yeah. 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 So I hear this a lot and I'd like to know how you respond to this. Someone comes to you and says, hey, Trevor, I took a clinic review or I didn't take a clinic review, but I really studied hard. Like I studied and I just, I failed and I am so discouraged so discouraged or maybe I feel twice yeah. what what would you say to them I'd say we can get you to pass you you need to regain some confidence because if even if you studied a million hours and you never have the confidence it's the end of it you probably still aren't going to pass so and I'm not saying like rebuild your confidence, but like in some sort of like fluffy way or emotional way, but like, hey, we want to, I would ha want to help you have confidence that's based in very, very solid, grounded things. And so it's, I'd want you to be really confident in the fact that, man, I know this essential content and I'd want you to be very confident in, in knowing how to apply that content to the NCLEX style questions um, that, that you're going to encounter. And then, you know, there's there's some other things that then there's like the personal aspect to it and testing anxiety that comes into play that, you know, there, there's a whole host of things you can kind of talk about or think about there. But um, at least as an NCLEX instructor, I can help you on the first part. And, and that that would probably apply to many people. But then the personal side of things It'd be a more like one-on-one -on -one conversation to help you think through that. Um, but I think it's, I just, I would tell that person like, hey, we got to rebuild your confidence and let's do it on some things that are very solid and are, aren't shifting underneath you so that when you do go into sit, you're like, no, I got this. I can do this. And so that would be, that'd be, that would be probably the first thing I would do is to give them hope in that way.
Yeah, and I agree that increasing your confidence is essential. If you can't get your confidence up, I always say whatever you're doing that's killing your confidence, stop doing it right now. That, that's the first thing you have to do. So if, if trying to memorize the rationale is killing your confidence, just stop doing it, um, whatever it is. Uh, but there is this, this personal issue, and if I can just touch on that just, just really quickly. Um, so I've talked with a number of people. I had a, a wonderful guy come to one of my reviews. I'd taken, I think, NCLEX three times. He was a vet. He had PTSD, um, and he had failed three times, was so discouraged. And some of it was, I think, one time um, he was actually suffering PTSD while he was taking the test. Another one, I think he, his mother had just died. I mean, there were things that, like, there were extenuating circumstances. Yeah. I've taught, had people talk to me who uh, they were in labor while they were taking their NCLEX, people who've had COVID while they were taking their NCLEX, wow. people who've had loved ones die, like, days before they take their NCLEX. So, of course, we always recommend reschedule your NCLEX if that happens. Like, don't take it in that circumstance. But people feel like, I have to do it, whatever. So, fine. If you took the NCLEX and you had those kind of extenuating circumstances, what I always say is pretend like it never happened. That one didn't count. It just didn't count because, you know, don't say to yourself, oh, I failed it three times. No, you haven't. Two of those didn't even count. <laughs> because, because it's just not reasonable to expect yourself to pass under when these extenuating circumstances are going on. It's hard enough to focus and, th and like focus on the question in front of you without any of the those life circumstances. So with some of those tragedies and um, I mean, being in labor, like that would be really, really hard to say, focus on the question and then move to the next one without being interrupted in the you know internal monologue. Yeah, wow, okay. Okay, any last thoughts? No, I don't think so. I think uh, just in general, how to pass, confidence is huge. And just, just have, just know that there's hope. You can pass, you made it through nursing school, you can pass, and, and but you may need some help. You probably will need some help identifying that essential content. And then most, most people are not taught very well in schools how to apply those to NCLEX style questions. They just don't have time to go through that in schools. And so... Like to differentiate it from what's nice to know versus what you need to know kind of a thing. That, exactly. Or even specific to the NCLEX style question as far as like, hey, you know, their, their exams are structured differently to this exam and their exams aren't vetted like this one and so the questions are going to land different they're going to feel different and so you most like most students are going to need help preparing for the NCLEX you know I bet 90 percent of students are going to need help and there's that 10 percent that whatever they're going to do fine on their own but yeah most students you need it so you got to look look out there get some help could be a book could be some resource you know a, a review like ours could be ours, but you're, you're going to need a help trying to especially identify the essential information. And I do want to point out that the Blue Book app is available at clinicreviews.com, um, and that is a part of the essential information that you need to know. So the Yellow Book, uh, the Yellow Book content, which is what we go over in the three-day review, that may not be something you can attend. You may not be able to attend the three-day review, which is fine, but you can certainly find some of that essential content in the Blue Book. Yeah, so that Blue Book, Mark has a note in the front and he says i tell all the people that come through my reviews you must know this book back and forward and we do the same thing in our reviews and if you master that blue book you're good to go you'll have all the content you need and it's just a matter of applying it on exam day right the three days is really about how to apply it and the rules and thinking um which is is wonderful but you got to have the content you need that you need exactly yeah Great. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, glad to be here.